The outcomes for patients with a refractory and aggressive non-Hodgkin's lymphoma are really poor. Zuma-1 is like one of the first multicenter trials of CAR T-cells in refractory non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And what's being studied is axicabdogene cellulosal, which is better known, I think, as Axicel, and it's formerly known as KTEC-19. And to talk about the data presented here at ASCO, I am with Dr. Frederick Locke, who is an MD, and he leads the uh, immune cell therapy uh, program at the Moffitt Cancer Center and a clinical research leader in the field of chimeric antigen receptor T cells, which is what CAR T is, and uh, acting as a national PI for several pivotal trials of patients with lymphoma. Let's start with some details about Axacel, which is, like I said, a little easier to say. It received a breakthrough therapy designation from the FDA, I know, and the biologics license application was recently submitted. So, what is it? <laughs> so, Axacel or Axacaptogene cellulosal is an anti CD19 CAR T cell therapy, CAR standing for chimeric antigen receptor. And uh, it's quite simply uh, patients own T cells that are removed from their body and they're reprogrammed with a gene so that they express a CAR or chimeric antigen receptor that targets CD19. And once those T cells are infused back into the patient's body, when they run into CD19 on the surface of B cell cancers like lymphomas and, and leukemias, they activate, proliferate, and destroy the tumors. And the manufacturing process in, in this one that you're, you're presenting here was pretty, it was like 99% successful, if I remember right. Yeah, so, so this clinical trial, the Zuma-1 clinical trial, is, is a pharmaceutical company-sponsored clinical trial, Kite Pharma. Uh, they manufacture the CAR T-cells at a central location. So at, in this trial, 22 sites enrolled patients uh, collected the T-cells from the peripheral blood and shipped them fresh to Kite Pharma's manufacturing facility where the gene and the CAR was put into the T-cells. The cells are frozen, shipped back to the treating center where the patient gets conditioning chemotherapy and the cells are infused into the patient's arm. So describe the patients and how you conducted Zuma-1. Yeah, so Zuma-1 is a, is a Zuma-1 is a clinical trial, a phase one and phase two clinical trial. We published the phase one results in molecular therapy. We're here at ASCO 2017 to present the primary analysis results and uh, some correlative data. Uh, the trial is, is testing out AxiCell for patients with truly chemorefractory diffuse large B cell lymphoma and primary mediastinal B cell lymphoma and transform follicular lymphoma. And chemorefractory in this case is defined as a, the response to their last line of therapy is progressive disease or at best stable disease or they relapse within 12 months of an autologous transplant. So a truly chemorefractory patient population. So those are the patients that were enrolled onto the trial. In the phase two portion of the trial, uh, which is the pivotal portion of the trial, there were 111 patients enrolled. Uh, 101 went on to receive axicaptogene cellulosal, and those 101 patients are the modified intention to treat uh, patient population that was pre-specified. And these were heavily pre-treated patients that had uh, uh, multiple lines of prior chemotherapy, over 50% not only didn't respond to their last line of chemotherapy, but they didn't respond to two consecutive lines of chemotherapy. And so uh, patients that truly really were without other standard of care treatment options that we could expect to work. So what did you find? Well, we found that, uh, that one infusion of axis cell could lead to responses in over 80% of patients and uh, complete responses in over 50% of patients. Wow. And uh, this compares very favorably to the historical control data, which comes from the Scholar 1 meta-analysis, which was presented here at ASCO last year, which showed that standard of care therapy for the same group of patients could, we could expect at best a one out of four of those patients to have any response and less than one out of 10 to have a complete response. So again, one infusion of Axicel for these patients with refractory lymphoma leads to an 82% objective response rate and 54% complete response rate, comparing very favorably to, to historical data. How about safety? Well, it, it, the therapy, as you can imagine, it, it's an immune therapy. Uh, we are infusing CAR T cells that are redirected against the tumor, and so patients uh, can develop fevers and something called cytokine release syndrome. Mm -hmm. However, severe cytokine release syndrome was only seen, a grade three or higher cytokine release syndrome was seen in only 13% of patients on the trial. The other major category of toxicity we see with CAR T cell therapy is neurologic events. 28% of patients on this trial uh, had what we call severe neurologic events, a grade three or higher. These CRS and neurologic events were generally reversible and in fact uh, went away in, in all patients with the only remaining CRS and neurologic event in one patient with some memory impairment. 
Uh, three patients did die on the trial out of the, the 101 patients. Um, so it, it's a therapy that we have to administer very carefully, sure. but considering that these patients are without any other treatment options, uh, we, we think that the risk to reward uh, benefit is, is very favorable to administer this therapy. One thing we found uh, in regards to the toxicities is that treating the CRS and neurologic events uh, with anti-IL-6 receptor antibody, a drug called tocilizumab, or corticosteroids did not lead to decreased response rates in these patients. So, you know, uh, these, these therapies kind of turn off it's immune responses yeah. and are used to, to treat the toxicities that can happen with this immunotherapy. But we found that patients who needed those, those tocilizumab or corticosteroid therapies uh, had the very similar uh, objective response rates and complete response rates, uh, suggesting that, that, yes, this therapy can have toxicities, but we can manage them with tocilizumab and corticosteroids, and it can still work to put patients in remission. So what's next? Well, you know, we're, we're very encouraged by the, the objective response rates and CR rates on the trial. Uh, in fact, the six-month uh, overall survival on the trial is 80%, again, comparing very favorably to a 55% six-month overall survival with historical data. Uh, but it's important that we see uh, the follow-up and see how long uh, these remissions can last. We know from the phase one experience on this trial published in molecular therapy that, that patients can remain in remission, complete response, for at least 18 months on the phase one portion of the trial, three out of seven patients. and. Uh, the prior experience with the same CAR T-cell construct at the National Cancer Institute patients remain in remission over two years out and counting. So, so we're uh, hopeful and we believe that this therapy can lead to prolonged remissions for many of these patients. Well, there is a lot of uh, hematologic uh, news that's coming out of ASCO this year, so please check online as well as in print. And for ASCO Clinical News, I'm Rick McGuire.